I've titled this message this morning as Get Ready for a Mighty Move of God. <laughs> How many people want to get ready? How many people got ready to come to church this morning? <laughs> You've got to get ready for something. If you're going to go somewhere, you get ready. How many men know that their wives... Oh, no, we're not going to go there. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm having enough trouble as it is in the packing division. But uh, Nance and I are shifting house, by the way. <laughs> Again. We're the great movers. <laughs> but anyhow... Uh, You've got to get ready for something. And, and I believe that one of the first things that, that you need to have is an expectation. Something's got to be, you know, I expect for God to do some things. There's got to become that expectancy. You know, if you need healing in your body, it's no good coming up hoping that it'll work. You've got to expect it to work. You've got to believe that it's going to work. You're going to have to believe that God's going to move by His Spirit and God's going to do things on this planet. If ever there's a time that this planet needs a move of God, it's today. Amen? There's so much confusion, so much misunderstanding. Man, there's so much going on today that, that we really need a move of God. And only a move of God will change the world. All the great men and women who did great exploits for God all had something in common. If you want to do something great for God, how many people want to do something great? You want to be a great whatever it is, whatever it is, be great at it. But you see, they all had something in them. There's something there that was in common. They all knew who they were in God. You see, today you can have a false humility. You, you can live so far below where God wants you to live in God. You, you, can, you can say, I'm not worthy, I'm no good, I'm, I'm, you know, I've done all these things that are wrong. But somehow or other, we've got to know that the creative, mighty, miracle working power that touched us when we got born again, cleansed us from all unrighteousness, from all sin, from all the past. My past is the past. And right now I've only got a future, amen. I live in the now, but I've got a future and the future looks great, amen. You've got to have an expectancy that it's going to be great and we're going to do great things. These people all had something in common. They knew uh, who they were in God. They knew what they, what they were carrying was from God. They knew that the anointing, the mantle, whatever you want to call it, was something that God had put upon their lives. They, they understood, they knew what they carried was of God. It was the awesome, unstoppable power of God. Do you know that you've been filled with the awesome, unstoppable power of God? You might think that all you do is babble. No, no, friend, it's not just babbling. It's not just tongues. You've got to understand that you have been filled with the unstoppable power of Almighty God. You have been filled with the greatest power on this earth. You've, got, you've been filled with the greatest anointing on this earth. The, the, what's inside us is so great. It's so awesome. But you see, what happens, like Samson was lulled to sleep in Delilah's lap. The church has been lulled to sleep and, and not believing who they really are. And we become so sin conscious and so failure conscious and so negative conscious. And goodness knows what, friend, I want to be God conscious. I want to be conscious of what God has done in this mortal body. What God has done in this person that was, was once lost but now has been found. And the mighty Savior now has filled me with that unstoppable power of God. That no demon in hell, no weapon formed against me will prosper. That nothing can stop the move of God that God wants to do in your life. See, there's got to come, you know, we can either be an optimist or a pessimist. And I believe that today we've got to push through, we've got to break through the strongholds and know that it was the un awesome, unstoppable power of God that was in all these people. They knew no devil or demonic power could stand against anoint a God's anointed man or woman. There's no power on earth, there's no devil, there's no demonic power that can stand against an anointed man or woman of God. Friend, that, that is the gospel. You might say, but I'm not experiencing that now. I'm not seeing that now. That doesn't alter the fact. 
The fact is that there are many that have found the truth and they've acknowledged and they've known who they are. I'm talking about the ones that have done great things in God. They knew who they were. They didn't just think they were or they didn't hope they were or didn't have some sort of a doctrine about it. They actually knew who they were. And they boldly confessed it and they boldly made statements. And friend, that's what we've got to do. We've got to break every negative thought. We've got to break every negative power. They knew no devil or demonic power could stand against God's anointed man or woman. They had an encounter with God. Friend, I don't know about you, but I believe we need an encounter with God. Now that encounter that Gordon had when he saw Jesus beckoning him, that was an encounter that today, I don't know how many years ago you had that, that encounter, but I want to tell you that encounter that you had say 20, 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, would be just as real today as the day you first saw it. Amen? We've got to keep regurgitating, if I can say it like that. We've got to keep remembering. We've got to keep talking about the moves and we've got to talk about, it doesn't matter, this is where we live now, but I want to tell you, I am moved not by what I see, but I'm moved by what I know and what I've experienced in the past. I know that God's even going to do greater things in the future. We are not on a downward slope. I want to tell you, it might be a little bit dry. The Word of God might be a little bit rare at the moment, but I want to tell you, God's about to pour out His Spirit and cause a fire to burn that's going to ignite and is going to manifest itself in power and authority and victory. And the men and women of God are going to stand tall again and Christians are going to stand and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and strong and powerful in Jesus' name. He is not a, just a crutch. Christianity is not just a confession, it is a lifestyle. We live it and I want to tell you, God will not stop still until the church again experiences the power of God and talks about the power and manifests the power and sees what God can do. See, they had an encounter with God that spoke louder to their sub subconscious than the obstacles they faced. Friends, something's gotta come that will speak louder to us than what we're seeing. Paul spoke often about his encounter on the road to Damascus. He spoke and testified about it. He encouraged himself with it. He shared many times how he was riding on his horse and how this lightning came or whatever it was that came from heaven and knocked him off his horse. How God started to speak to him. Paul, Paul, why do you kick against the pricks? And then he started to share with him and it wasn't too long after that, that he was filled with the Holy Spirit and with power and he had an encounter with God and he had a relationship with God and he met with God and he knew his God Amen. See, today, a lot of people in churches don't even know God. You can go to church and not know God. Go to church and not be a Christian. I walked into a chook house the other day and I didn't become a rooster. <laughs> Friend, I want to tell you, I don't know about you, but I'm hungry for a move of God. Put up your hand if you're hungry for a move of God. If you're hungry for something that's real, that will speak louder to you than the circumstances you're going through, that you'll know because you know because you know that God rules and reigns, amen. That you know because you know that if God be for you, who can be against you? And whatever you're going through, these light afflictions, they're working for you. They're not working against you. They're working for me, hallelujah. And the devil's going to woo the day that he ever messed with us. He's going to woo the day that he ever messed with the church. He's going to woo the day because the church is going to rise up and kick his butt. Is that all right? <laughs> Paul spoke often about this encounter. He encouraged himself, testified to many regarding the experience. 
Friend, I want to tell you today, encourage yourself in the Lord. Start to remember that day. Go back many, many years perhaps when God touched you that way, when God put his hand upon you that day, when God met you that day, when God did something for you that day. Go back there and encourage yourself and don't think that was just a figment of your imagination. It was a reality and you've got to keep stirring it up within you because God is going to do great things in you going to do great things for you amen because that's our God that's what God wants to do Curry's he prayed uh, when Paul prayed for the church it wasn't a doctrine it was birthed out of experience something that had happened to him Paul had a revelation something that happened to him I, I, I can't I, I, I really can't express this as much as I, as I want to because you've got to catch it by the Spirit. Yeah. It's not something you can, you can just say, but somehow or other we've got to catch something in the realm of the Spirit that will somehow or other catapult us into, into a different realm, yeah. out of the natural, into the Spirit in Jesus' name, out of natural thinking into spiritual thinking. You've got to get rid of natural Yeah, we live in the natural and we work in the natural. But when we come to the things of God, the natural has to bow and give way to the supernatural. And Paul, when he spoke, he he, he wasn't just rattling off something there that was going to make everybody say, oh, what a wonder. No, he was talking out of experience and he was talking out of a passion that he wanted the people that were listening to him to catch something of the Spirit that would break them out of their lethargy and break them out of the slumber and, and, and where they were at that would take him into another realm. Who wants to go to another realm? Come on, how? We've... Anybody catching my drift here today? I am so excited because, because I know and I know because I know because I know. And Paul, as, as he was preaching and as he was sharing there and talking to people, and, and, and I'm just trying to find my spot here. <laughs> and In Ephesians chapter 1, uh, and he says, I do not, verse 16, he says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. Friend, don't just read this as a story. Read this as if Paul is speaking to you, praying for you, because that's what he's doing, amen. It's not just a, a bygone era. It's now that this is just as alive today as it was the days that it came out of his lips. He wants the church to realize who we are. And what is what God has done for us, that God would open the eyes of our understanding, that we might be filled with the knowledge and understanding of God. You see, friend, there's something's got to happen. And as we read this, this, please, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. I've lost my place. <laughs> I'm going to go back to 16. Do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. What are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe according to the working of His mighty power which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His own right hand in heavenly places? Far above principality and power and might and dominion and name and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Friend, I want to tell you, if we understood what that verse says, what those verses say, you would rise up, you would smash every devil that gets around your life, you would just push him out of the way because I want to tell you that is God's 
unadulterated word to you. If that isn't good enough, then in, in chapter 3, verse 19, God's, uh, the Word of God says that then you can be filled with the fullness of God. T. You and I can be filled with the fullness of God. And then we go around and say, I can't do this. I can't do that. Friend, I want to tell you, you, you can keep saying you can't. But I want to tell you, until we rise up and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, nothing will change. You can be filled with the fullness of God. What an amazing, amazing thing. That is an amazing statement. Think of that just for a moment that you can be filled with the fullness of God. Just let me read this to you from the Amplified, Ephesians 3 verse 19. That you may really come to know. <laughs> that you may really come to know. That's an amazing start, isn't it? That you may really come to know practically, practically, through experience for yourself. The love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. See, God wants you to experience Him. God wants, just doesn't want, this is not knowledge because it's a doctrine, but it's because of an experience. But you see, you can come to church and know about God, know about the great miracles, know about all these things. But I tell you what, friend, it's better felt than telt. It's better to be able to experience the love of God that God wants to pour out upon you than just to hear about it and have some sort of a out there. But when God puts His arm around you, when God comes in into you and, and, and loves on you and fills you with His presence. Friend, you know, when we come to worship, we, we, you can sit there, stand there, or, or you can enter in and come into something that's so dynamic and sense the presence of God. Somebody came to me this morning and said, Neil, last week, he said, I just sense the presence of God. And that I'm, we're not here just to bash our gums together. We're here so you can experience the presence of God. Is that okay to have a church like that? I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not here to make you feel good. I want God to get a hold of you. To feel the presence of God. Have Him put His arms around you. Sometimes He might even have to pull out the chainsaw and cut out a bit of dead wood. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Come on, friends. Can I want to be able to experience something which surpasses mere knowledge without experience that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body holy, filled and flooded with God himself. How many people say, I'll have that? <laughs> Come on, put up your hand, I'll have that. I want that. I want that. That's what I want for my life. Friend, that's what I want for this church. I just don't want to entertain Be able to experience the presence of God. Be able to be filled. Paul had a revelation of God who was able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above, beyond anything he could ask or think because of the power that God poured out upon him. We've got to understand that God can do it this God that we serve can do exceedingly abundantly above. All that we can even ask or imagine or think. That's what God can do. Paul's desire 
was that we might be aware of exactly who we are in Christ. Who are you in Christ? We're the son and the children of God. We are, we are his body. We need to know, he wants us to know the unlimited, incredible dimension of God's mighty power that is directed towards us. I don't know how you see it sometimes, but we've got to be able to understand that right now there is a, a channel of God's power flowing towards us. It's there if we can just tap into it and receive what God's got for us. I don't know about you, but that's what I want. <laughs> At the gatehouse, when we kicked off, I, I, I encourage myself often. We st I believe they've pulled the gatehouse down. But the gatehouse is a little building there the, in Nambour, the state school there, where we started the, the Christian Outreach Centre Church. The place just filled amazingly. Miracle after miracle happened. I can, I can remember People there that came in as cripples went out walking and healing. One lady in particular that had gone through a, a, a car uh, windscreen at some ridiculous speed. She almost severed her arm and a leg and her back was, was all messed up. She was a, basically a cripple. When I went, to, they brought her to church in the back of a station wagon at the time. And she came in on one of those walkers, but she had to push down hard so that she really floated in on that because she couldn't stand uh, any weight on her legs. The power of God hit her and she was instantly healed. A husband who was a, a, an electrician had to give up his job and he became a night watchman or a night jo job there so that he could be home during the day to look after his wife and family. He came out, he was rugged. This man had hands. When he shook my hands, it was like sandpaper. He was a tough man. But as he looked at his wife there, as she said, darling, she said, I'm healed. I, the pain is gone. And tears started rolling down this man's face. Friend, that's the power of God. And I've got to encourage myself with that. As a matter of fact, I'm getting goosebumps down my legs now. I know it doesn't mean much feelings, but I want to tell you it's better felt again than told. To be able to encourage yourself in God. I can remember an Italian man that, that had his family come to our church. They didn't want to come. This man got dragged to the church. He and his wife got dragged to the church. He sat in the church. He listened to me preach about Noah. And he said, this idiot believes that. <laughs> he was an evolutionist. He was an educated, well-educated man. Sat there. But the word of knowledge went forth. And as the word of knowledge went forth, his wife looked at him and said, that is me. And she came out on the altar and the power of God hit her. She got slain in the spirit. Her hundred dollar hairdo looked like a, a, a mosh pot. <laughs> she had tears running down her face. Her mascara was everywhere. She looked, there she was, there. And this man, this Italian man came out and he stood beside his wife and he looked at her and she, he says, Chaz, you might know who I'm talking about now. I'm healed. I'm healed. And he knew the condition that his wife had because he was a dentist. And he understood a lot about the medical things and how it was impossible. And as he, as he stood there, as he looked, and as he looked at his wife, he looked at me and I said, do you want what she's got? Because she started to speak in another language. And it wasn't Italian. And he said yes, and he got born again that day. Today is the past, all he was until a couple of months ago of that church. See amazing things. We went up to the, we went up then to the pineapple shed. How many people remember the pineapple shed? The power of God was flowing in that pineapple. People were getting born again, saved, delivered, set free. Amazing things were happening. It was a manifestation of the power of God. People just being touched by God. People that didn't even want to get born again were getting born again. 
I had a man there that came because his uh, w- wife and a sister and his mother, uh, mother-in-law got born again at one of Nancy's coffee nights that they had. And she, they started to come to church. They started to change and things started to happen and it was upsetting his life because he didn't like this life that his wife was now living. She didn't want to do all the bad things that he used to do. So he says, I'm going to go along to that church. I'm going to find fault with that church. I don't tell you, if you're looking for fault, you'll find fault. And he most likely had a list. But he walked through the door of that gatehouse, of of the pineapple shed. As he walked in the door, he took one step into that building and then he was in God's territory. (laughs) The power of God came on that bloke and he, he started to stagger under the anointing until he found a seat at the back of the church and he sat himself down and he said, hold right through the whole meeting. He said, tears were rolling down his cheek, down his face. And when the altar call came, he said he didn't even want to put up his hand, but he said his hand went up in the air and he got gloriously saved. He served in that church for the next nine years to my knowledge. I'm talking about a move of God. I'm talking about what God can do. Even here in this place that's, that's used for multiple things. Fran was here one day, one day at the end of the altar call and all of a sudden she comes over. She said, I've had a vision of a serpent that's wrapped around my spine. She had some condition in her spine. I don't know what it was. I'm not medically knowledgeable. But she had this thing that was crippling, agonizing pain. And she came out and we prayed for that day and immediately she was set free. Uh, This is what we need to be free. We're we're singing songs here about, I am free, I am free. But friend, we can be so bound with our religiosity and our wrong thinking and our concepts with God. We've got to get a hold again of God. We've got to stir up the gifts within us. We've got to start crying out, hey God, come on, pour it on again. See, that's what we want to do on, on our prayer meeting nights is to come on and believe God that there will be a change. I'm just talking about this. How many people know that we can pray in, in our prayer meeting there and something can happen a thousand miles away? God can do whatever He likes. I don't care how God does it. He just told us to pray and believe. But I'm believing that we'll get our portion. Amen? I believe that we'll get our por- portion. Por- that's what, what He was doing right here, right now. It could happen today. You see, because it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of Hayes will not prevail against it. Do you believe that? Has anybody ever heard about the heavenly man? Who knows about the heavenly man? Chinese man that got born again in China. I think he was, was he born again in prison? Well, I had the privilege of ministering with that man. I met that man and, 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 and here's this, a man that had an experience, something like Peter. He was in prison, they were, I believe they were going to execute him. But the power of God came into that place. Somebody just loving on Jesus. I, I don't know much about the man, but here he is in jail. And it says that the Spirit of God came upon him and says, stand up and start to walk out. And he says, as he, as he obeyed the voice, I don't know whether he had a visitation of an angel. I can't remember now. It's a long time ago. But as he started to walk towards that gate, the gate just opened. The guards that were there were asleep. They could, they, they, he just kept on walking. And even when he came to the main gate of that prison, the gate opened. And then he said, as he walked out of that gate, there was a taxi. Right at the gate, he got in the taxi and drove away. What an amazing thing. This man... I met him over in England. He listened. He was there while I was preaching. Came up to me later on, and he, though we couldn't speak, I couldn't speak Chinese. He couldn't speak English. But there was a rapport. There's something there that happened between us that day. And as as he was ministering that day on on the altar, he had uh, I think there was about 600 or 700 people in that alt, in that auditorium that that day. And he made an altar call for people that wanted to touch and that wanted to break free, like he was, and and have an experience with God. And the whole congregation, the whole church, rose up. Friend, I want to tell you, we're going to have to get not just the ones and twos, but we're going to get to a place where every one of us say we want a move of God, and I'm prepared to change. 
And this guy, when he made this altar call and he was standing there and he came over to me and he grabbed hold of me and he brought me over to the platform and he took my hand and he had his hand, come, come, come stand. He took my hand and he had hold of my hand like that. And he was a little fella and he used that hand and laid that hand on every person that was in that auditorium. There's something about the laying on of hands. Something about releasing. Releasing. But I, 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 was, I was just because... Yeah, yeah. See, he, he told us all to pray for people. And I was there and I was the international president of the movement at that time. And, and I looked at these people as I walked over to them to pray for them. And I said, hey, I know you don't want me to pray for you. You want him to pray for you. I said, tell you what, how about I have a deal? I'll lay hands on you, you fall over. As soon as I get up, go past you, you can stand up again. <laughs> but then he grabbed me and I laid hands on at least six to 700 people. That man, because of his, who he was, he went over to America. Went to all the major churches in America, the massive churches. He got shocked actually when he went to America because he heard that America was a Christian nation. And he was so excited to go to a Christian nation because he'd come out of this barbaric thing that he was in. And he got to America and as he got through the airport, he noticed that bars and people smoking and drinking and carrying on. And then as he, as he went out into the towns, he saw all the, and he couldn't work it out. He said, this is supposed to be a Christian country. And all this is going on. And then he went to all the major churches, the big churches, massive churches. And all oh, they showered everything on him and blessed him and everything like that. And when they were taking him back to the airport to go back, because I believe he lives in Germany, and he was going back to Germany. And as he was in the, in, in the airport, they said to him, what impressed you most about the American churches? He said, how much you can do without God. That's, hey, come on. How much you can do without God. I don't want that, do you? I want a relationship with Jesus. I don't want to just stand up here like a performing seal. <laughs> I want a bunch of people that draw it out here, that are hungry for God, amen, that want God more than anything else in the world, that want God, that want God, the heavenly man. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. The gates of Hades. God wants to fill us with his fullness. Directed Paul to declare the mystery or the revelation of the church. In truth, what Paul is declaring is that as a result of the mighty infilling of the Holy Spirit, you can do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think. Let me say it again. Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. He also said, if you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me, you will find me. I got a lot more, but I won't. I'll close with that. I think you've caught the drift, eh? How many people are really hungry for God? Will you stand with me right now? Come on. Are we going to declare it to this generation? Who will declare it? Who will declare it? Who will declare it to this generation?